At Ash Wednesday a little while ago, we've had Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday, and now next Sunday is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. So we sent Scott Ross to the streets of Nashville to talk to people about what took place 2,000 years ago. Here are their responses. We're about to celebrate uh, a very important historical event. You know what it is? Earth Hour? No, it's a historical event. It goes back roughly 2,000 years. And what is that? You wouldn't know? No. Think, think, think. Historical Some... event back 2,000 years. Yes. Sure. Well, look at that. See? It takes Actually, the woman of the house. Easter. Uh, what does Easter mean? Um, Christ ro arose then. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, do you believe it? Yes. Why do you believe it? Why do you believe it? That's do you believe, I believe it? I don't go there. <laughs> you don't go there? <laughs> Why don't you go there? I just don't go there. Yeah, and you, so you really do believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ yes. as well as the crucifixion yes. uh, for the resurrection. Undeniable yes. in the Bible. No question about it. Yeah, you think people have lost faith in the 21st century? A lot of people don't believe this anymore. Well, a lot of people do, though. I totally believe in it. And anybody tries to tell me different, I argue with them. Because, <laughs> you know, you have a lot of different people out here that believe different things. So. You believe the Bible? Yes. So you believe that Jesus Christ literally Died, yes. died on the cross first, yes. then rose from the dead yes. as a physical person. Well, as a spirit, not a physical uh, person. Oh, not a physical person? No. Interesting answers, cross-section, and that's Bible Belt. Think what it would be like if it was in the heart of Manhattan. Well, Josh McDowell is the author of more than 100 books, including his bestseller, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Today, he joins us to talk about his latest book, Evidence for the Resurrection, which he wrote with his son, Sean. Josh, good to have you back with us, buddy. It's good to be back. This Josh. makes my year always yeah. happen. <laughs> well, just before uh, Palm Sunday, Evidence for the Resurrection. What are you telling people here? Well, when I set out to refute Christianity, right, Evidence that Demands a Verdict, I knew I had to refute, one, that Christ ever claimed to be God, uh -huh. the reliability of the Bible that wasn't true, and third, the resurrection. All right. Because I could not believe anyone could be alive and dead and alive again. When you're dead, you're dead. And well, I mean, you to, didn't believe that in the early days? Absolutely not. Come on. Who yeah, can okay. believe that somebody was alive and died and brought back to life? Okay. And I thought of the three. That'd be the easiest to refute. And Pat, that night I sat in my dorm room in the university. I leaned back in the chair and right out loud I said, he is risen. I, I mean, it, it was like a revolution came over me. And that night, I knew I was eventually going to trust Christ as Savior and Lord. What? And since then, I wanted to make one major statement about the resurrection to help believers. What was the trigger that brought you? I mean, you say he is alive. How did you, how did you know? I would say I took the principles of historical research, not religious research, anything yeah. else, historical research and applied to the evidence for the resurrection. One thing I couldn't believe is there was so much apart from the Bible about it, yeah. of other writings what and did everything. You find? Well, for example, just the emptiness of the tomb. Yeah. Uh, in Jewish writings, I document where they confirmed that the tomb was empty. empty. Yeah. But also, what I found out, what convinced the disciples of the resurrection was not the empty tomb, because mm -hmm. that could be explained away from a natural perspective. Sure. It was his appearances. And to, uh, like Paul said, to over 500 people at one time. And what gets me, and I kind of got sucked into it a while, and they say, well, they had hallucinations. <laughs> and I say, oh, yeah, they're hallucinating, and dismiss it. So I examined it. A hallucination is internal, not external. Mm -hmm. There's nothing external that triggers an internal hallucination. That's why all hallucinations are individual to yeah. the individual. Well, here, if you had 500 people having hallucinations about the same thing, an eternal object of Jesus Christ, then you'd have to have 500 miracles equal to the resurrection. Because no two hallucinations are the same. Yeah, yeah. But they all saw the same thing. That's right. They all saw the same and, thing. Uh, and I would say the biggest thing that swung me on it was the changed lives of the apostles. Mm -hmm. Where without the resurrection, I cannot explain away what happened. And I've read all the great thinkers. I've read all the thinkers that think they're great. Mm -hmm. And I've concluded not one of them has even come close to satisfying my intellectual curiosity. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, then what happened to the lives 
of the apostles. People don't go to death in support of a lie. They don't do it. Liars don't make good martyrs. No, they certainly don't. I'm not going to go hang on a cross because of some lie. I mean, no way. Well, that's interesting because that's one of the things I bring out okay. is that people say, well, a lot of people have died for a lie, speaking yeah. of the apostles. I said, yes, a lot of people have died for a lie, but they always believed it was the truth. Yes. And this is what calls me to question so much in my own life is that if the resurrection was a lie, then they had to know it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you'd have to say these 12 men, 11 to 12, not only died for a lie, but they knew it was a lie. Even common sense told me sure. that cannot be true. Exactly. Well, you believe, obviously, that it was physical, that Jesus physically rose from the tomb, which is what the Bible said. But the thing is, yeah. most Christians, 95% of the Christians, have never had a chance or never taken the opportunity to just look at what the truth is. And that's why I wanted to write this book. Yeah. I wanted to be able to document it for that believer because once you become convinced of it, it changes your life. Sure you're, con you're convinced once that forgiveness is true. Yeah. Without the resurrection, you cannot be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Second, it's the final stamp that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God. Well, you know, this is what the Apostle Paul said. If he didn't rise from the dead, then we're the most miserable of men if there is well, no resurrection. I'll say to people, do you believe Christ raised the dead? Yes. Why? Because I have faith. Mm. I said, that is voodoo thinking. Yeah. Paul said, if Christ be not raised <laughs> dead, if that is not true, That's right. you can have all the faith in the world. And Paul said, it is worthless. Mm -hmm. And so remember the young man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Well, that's one reason that motivated me to write this book right. was for the believer saying, Jesus, I believe, but I don't understand it all. Help, help, help me my. with my unbelief. So my son and I wanted to step into there with the believer because once you become truly convinced yes. of the resurrection, you become more courageous in the way you live in your uh, influence upon How your neighbors. How did you prepare this? Was there anything special you did to prepare this or was this a lifetime? It was about three thousand hours of research. Are you serious? Yeah. <clears throat> you see, this was a part of my major book, uh, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. I have a whole section in there in the resurrection. Right. But I always wanted to take it because there was so much more and go from there. And then also show, it's one thing to believe that Christ was raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. The other to understand what that means to you personally. For example, after I trusted Christ mm -hmm. and I was convinced that Christ was raised from the dead, this thought, I wasn't a believer yet, All right. is that the God creator of the universe wants me to spend eternity with him. Mm. I still struggle with that to understand that yeah. today, but I know that is true because of the resurrection. resurrection. Gosh, fabulous. This book is called Evidence of, for the Resurrection, and uh, you need to get this. Where can people get it? Oh, you can get it at Borders, uh, Christian bookstores. You can go to can I get my website? You can give me anything you want to. Josh.org forward slant risen. And we have free downloads and everything on it for okay. pastors, everyone. Josh.org forward lot, slant risen. A lot, a lot of people getting it. This is wonderful for the I priest. hope so, because uh, we need the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on it. But here's the thing, Pat. <clears throat> yeah, 35 well, years ago, I signed a contract that all my royalties are given away. Really? I've never seen one dollar of multi-millions of dollars worth of They all go to the board of Campus Crusade for Christ. What? Everything. Fantastic. All my honorariums do. Yeah. Then I thank God the board turns around, puts them back into our ministry to cover our We're okay. a youth ministry. Amen. So it doesn't matter if I write one book or 112 I've written, it doesn't affect my income, only the color of my hair. Well, Looks like you've written a few too, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> really? You, one, you've written one, a few more than I have. More, one more coming up. No, I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm only working on, I think, number 18, so you've got 100 of them ahead of me. But uh, evidence for the resurrection, and you can get it. Borders or what? any Chris bookstore, just go to Josh.org. Josh.org. You're terrific. We appreciate you, brother. God oh, Pat, bless you. Thanks again. God bless you. Josh McDowell, one of the great uh, apologists for the Christian faith in this world. Terry. Josh, I want to thank